Well, in many ways, the region is very prosperous, and everybody is trying to figure out how can we attach our country's prosperity to a rising Indo-Pacific region. I think this came through the Asia Century Report. I think it's been part of the U.S. rebalancing policy, which really reflects a long-term interest in placing a greater priority on the Asia-Pacific region in the years to come. The most immediate serious challenge is on the Korean Peninsula. North Korea is continuing to acquire nuclear weapons, trying to build long-range missile systems. It's showed a propensity to use lethal force twice in the year 2010. And it has a very young leadership under Kim Jong-un, which is consolidating power on the surface. But beneath the surface, there are signs that there could be a backlash. There could be a military coup, or if not a coup, there could certainly be the military getting greater priority in terms of nuclear programs which in turn will sow more problems uh, for the region. The, the problem with North Korea is not just the nuclear proliferation issue and the lethal use of force. It's the fact that it could erupt in a moment's time into a regional war that could bring the United States and China and their allies into conflict. So it's a very serious, highly militarized problem. Territorial and maritime disputes in the South and East China Sea really are symptomatic, though, of a long-term challenge and opportunity for Australia and the United States. And that's how do we successfully manage a rising China, uh, a China that has a different set of principles that it's adhered to in terms of its politics, in terms of transparency, democracy, uh, human rights. Um, and uh, how can two liberal democracies, the United States and Australia, work with other countries in the region, not to contain China, not to encircle China, but to encourage China to be the responsible member of the community that we hope it will become. Well, Rome wasn't built in a day, and I think Asia-Pacific uh, regional security is, is rapidly changing. And it's grown so quickly, so, so um, much in recent years that it's impossible for institution building to keep up with it. So this takes a great deal of engagement, of forethought, of, of, of cooperation. Um, we need allies like Australia to be signal participants and sort of thinking through how can we better put together uh, building blocks of regional cooperation. This cultural, political, an economic aspect, uh, the commercial aspect of this relationship is absolutely crucial for building the kind of Asia-Pacific architecture that I hope uh, will eventually prevail in this region that both Australians and the United States will say, look, most of the countries of this region now want to play by the same set of rules. They want fair uh, and free trade. They want free uh, political speech. Um, they want to settle their differences through diplomatic means, not through military means. That's the kind of regional community that our values speak to. They've not always been true to, but those are the ones that we aspire to. And I think that's what Australia and the United States share together and why we're going to work so closely in the future, regardless of who the prime minister, who the president is.